What's up, Miniatures Paintbrush Legion? This is Rob, your host, and today we're going to talk about painting up the Tidewall Gun Ring for the Tau Empire. Now, all the tips, tricks, and techniques that I use for this Tidewall Gun Ring, you can use on any Tau terrain. So let's get on to the tutorial. All right, so here we are, Steinal Res Primer coming in in a clutch. I literally just use that for my white. It has a great dull white effect. Now we're going to use some frog tape. I like to use frog tape. They also have them more for delicate surfaces as well. But this is the one that I'm using because it's the one I bought. All right, so uh, I'm going to put on this tape, and sometimes you need to cut the tape in order to, or to uh, actually fit somewhat correctly on uneven surfaces and that's completely normal uh, so yeah you want to get a you want it to lay as flat as you possibly can especially for those areas in which you're going to section off so you can paint a different color now I am going to paint this section off a different color so I'm using my exacto blade right now and I have uh, vampire <laughs> nails and the reason why I have vampire nails is because I'm actually going to use my nails to guide me right there to push things in the grooves and the recesses in order to uh, cut out the areas where I actually want a different color right and it lifts so easily make sure you use a brand new exacto blade for this uh, you're gonna need the accuracy of it all right now mechanic stand this gray is what I'm going to put onto the gun rig now that it's all kind of taped off and it's kind of a little tricky to work with because mechanic stand the gray at least the ones that I had is running a little bit thick so uh, using the a nice mixture that will actually flow out of the airbrush is important and there's a lot of trial and error here uh, I can't really give an exact recipe only because you know different mechanic stand the gray comes in in different consistency in the shop so the actual ratio to water changes depending on how arid your area is where they stored the Mechanicus down the grid before you even got to it so I play around with it back and forth uh, I try to test the back of my hand I wore a glove there just to make sure uh, that it's spraying okay all right time for the reveal I love the reveal like I think it's absolutely uh, outstanding that I'm like, oh, did it bleed through, bleed not? All right, so one of the things you want to do is you don't want to let your paint dry overnight when you do before you do the reveal. You want to just get it to the point where you can touch the paint and not mar it and then peel it off because this way the paint doesn't seep through to the paint areas that you do not want. Now, time for mechanic to stand the gray. What if you don't own an airbrush, right? Okay, so uh, you need to paint it this way. It was just very diluted, sort of like a watercolor painting that you would do on a canvas, right? And you could just do a layer and let it dry and then a layer and then let it dry and then another layer and let it dry now you come up with the same kind of effect the only thing that's different between the airbrush I find and the paintbrush is that it saves you a ton of time and for me time is the resource you do not get back so I don't want to waste any of that time uh, I try to airbrush as much as possible and then the places where I don't want to reach I'll get into there with the paintbrush so my painting style isn't just solely airbrush it's not solely paintbrush it's both it's like a hybrid of both and that's what is most efficient for me so I always try to um, mix it up but I really do try to let the airbrush the tool meant for painting easily do most of the heavy lifting all right all right so I'm gonna show you uh, the actual floor basing and how I do that and I wanted to section these off now you're gonna see that the tape job isn't exactly perfect uh, but I didn't want it to be it, it doesn't have to be it was a simple reason the way I did this with the black over it I could always paint black over any of the edges and clean that up with a brush okay all right so more Mechanicus standard gray now look how the ugly I want to talk about the ugly phase here Okay, this is what I want to specifically talk about because a lot of people's like uh, once and done and they, under, they don't understand why their paint jobs look a little chunky or they don't have an, oh, well, I, I thought I thinned down the paint. Look at the consistency of this, okay? It's going to look ugly before it looks nice because when you're painting, especially this, even if painting over white and for, for all goodness sake, 
please, 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 if you're painting a lighter color, paint it over white instead of black. It's going to look ugly at first. It's going to look ugly ugly at first. Now, I'm using primer for this, and I'm going to brush on primer. <gasps> brush on primer! Oh no, I can't! It's fine. It's fine. It's going to look exactly the same as the Mechanic Standard. Great. It's going to have that ugly face before it looks good. Now, notice here, on that primer, on the Steinle Res Primer, which is meant for air, straight to airbrush, although I usually dilute it in the airbrush anyway, um, I use that straight. And the reason why I like using Style and Res Primer is because it's self-leveling. And if you don't know what that means, you say, oh, um, if you don't know what that means, that means that exactly what the package says, yes, it levels itself out. So even if you don't do a perfectly smooth paint job, it's going to level out and it's going to look great. All right. Uh, most paints, when you dilute it and you saturate it, um, they also have that consistency, but you need to saturate it and play around the saturation of the actual paint in order to get the consistency that is, you know, to the point where it just nice, lice and levels out and does not have the globs. And, and, but with this, I find, um, I just go on straight on and it levels out. Okay. So there it is. It's, it's pretty much done on the floor right there. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is the exciting phase. Okay. This is where it all comes together. I am going to build this. As and I'm just a little bit of tips and tricks here on how to build this thing. I like to put a nice bead uh, along here uh, of the super glue and uh, then work it out. And uh, one of the things, uh, one of the takes, tricks, one of the tricks of this is that um, sometimes if you do not get it just right, the actual paneling for each section of this donut, what people call it, right? Um, it doesn't line up right. So you want to do it while it's still uh, moist, while it's still wet. Uh, you want to get the edges here as well. So this way they glue to each other creating a fortified bond uh, you do need a decent amount of glue in order for it to to have that secure bond and for it to withstand the use and abuse that you're going to see on the game table because usually people knock into it and it falls over or something happens now with mine um, hopefully it doesn't fall too far, but if I think it fell a little distance there, it wouldn't totally break apart because I think it's pretty secure and you're going to see that right there. Again, you want to hold it for a little bit of while, a little while. Um, if you want, you can have somebody come in there with some dry, with, uh, some super glue accelerated drying. Um, I like Zappagap. They use that as well, but just be careful with that because that is actually uh, it can be toxic uh, it'll burn your eyes it'll burn like it's it's pretty intense so be careful with that if you had another person uh with you assisting they can join in the fun and use that carefully and it'll accelerate the drying time does what the package says accelerate the drying time of this um of the super glue now some people use baking soda too um, I've never used it, but I heard it works. So there you go. So, okay. So it's all about fit and finish here. Just make sure that each edge, uh, comes out just right. And you got to want to go back and forth. And sometimes, you know, it, it gets a little finicky to the point where, you know, come on, it falls off, you know, it comes out. You got to be careful with that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just make sure everything kind of lines up. And look at that, that stark, super clean white. Well, Rob, what if I don't want super clean white? Well, you can always at any point add some battle damage to it. In fact, every time that I play my towel and use like this terrain piece, I'm going to add like a little scuff to it. Just one. It's like a battle scar for every time I use it on the table, right? So it's going to tell a story. I love telling a story. All right. Winton oil colors, I use that, uh, and then odorless mineral spirits. I actually got that odorless mineral spirits from um, those construction stores, um, to Home Lowe's. You can go to Home Lowe's, you can go to Home Depot. And I used to think that maybe there was a version of it that was, you know, super um clean or something like that and then uh and then an artist version of it and i i didn't i didn't know that to me it's all the same it all works the same now now what i'm doing is i'm taking this uh reaper base that i actually bought from a kickstarter for reaper miniatures 
and I'm putting it on the bottom, I'm putting some poster tack on here. I have spilt this mixture way too many times that I want to actually admit. So, <laughs> and it does make a mess. It makes an absolute mess when you spill it. So you just gotta be careful with that. I put a nice little round, huge base on there. I'm sure there's all other people could 3D print something. Make something to secure this. And what I'm using is a cup. Now these cups, you can, uh, containers you can see, like usually when you go to a fast food restaurant, they have that. I go into uh, Sam's Club, Costco, that, that bulk buying store, and I bought myself an entire box of this stuff and now I have little mixing cups for the rest of my hobby career. All right. <laughs> All right, so what I'm doing is I'm using a uh, dropper in order to put the mixture in. It's the cleanest way to do that. Mineral spirits have a tendency of creeping along the edges of things and getting where you don't want to uh, want it. So I use a little pipette in order to do that. I like the word pipette. All right, this is gonna be thoroughly satisfying for other people. I'm gonna use the end of this brush and um and if you find this satisfying i don't know what's going on with you brother i do not know what's going on with your sister all right anyway <laughs> All right, so there's that Winton oil uh, coming from Windsor and Newton. Uh, you can use other kinds of oils. I just like this one in particular. All right, so here's the mixing process. You have to take that solid piece of paint and make it flow. Okay, so in other words, you got to break it all down, and it takes a long time. It takes a totally long time. So what you need to do is be patient in here. I mean, we're in a hobby with patience. If you do not have the patience in order to do this, then it might not come out the way you want it. So take your time, use the back of a brush. I use the back of a brush in order to do that. And I swish it around and I, I tap it in there and I swish it around some more. Uh, just realize that this process takes some time, but the ends justify the means. Check what I can do. Now I'm using a stick pen. Um, and this stick pen I actually got from Amazon. It was, there's just, you know, use, go stick pen. All right. And check out all the options you have for you. I checked out the capillary action when it comes to the mineral spirits. Boom, done. Straight recessed lines. Boom, done. All right. Now you may want to adjust the uh, thickness of the mixture. Um, I, I did not measure. <laughs> you saw how many drops I put in. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but it works really well to get those straight black lines in the recesses that so many people have struggle with with the inks and i've used inks and i've used a lot of different things in order to go those straight back lines but in the end look at that it looks absolutely phenomenal the results just speak for themselves and i'm going to do some more of that very satisfying i think this is a very very satisfying uh process now you notice there that i actually mixed that um mineral spirits uh oil paint mixture right there so you're going to have to redo it. Uh, you have to remix it, reactivate it like that, or re re uh, usually. Now, you're going to see over here, I have a Q-tip, and what I did was is that if I made an errant mark, I just go back with a Q-tip and just suck that sucker up. Uh, see how easy it is? The thing about oh, using oil paints is that it has a longer dry time, which is great, but at the same time, it just takes a long time to dry, as, the, you know, as it says on the package, right? Uh, <laughs> all right, so... Um, once I do this, I let this dry for 24 hours before I even think about touching it because it will take that long. Uh, in some cases, it'll take even longer depending how thick the paint is, right? But the results, the results are amazing. Okay, even Evil Skun Scarlet I use for mine um, and I use Vallejo Metal Color for the gold parts and look at the bracing of my hands, okay? This is where I wanted to focus on, the, the bracing of my hands. Now I put one hand on top of the other and I brace my hands because my hands shake. So if you shake doing this hobby, you need to brace your hands. This is one technique where you put your hand inside your hand, hold your hand steady, and then you can't move your hand a whole bunch of places. The only place you can move your hand is where you need to paint. And that gives you ultimate control. I put this right onto the table this hand positions for both my hands onto the table really helps it out all right time for some temple guard blue also my color scheme i wanted to keep it simple limit my color palette and just have that again all the grittiness a lot of the grittiness uh and stuff that we would add i'm gonna add as i use this terrain so this way you can literally have battle scars i think that was just a cool idea that i'm going to do 
you can add all the cracks, all the, the smidgen in the paint, all the kinds of things um, you want to. You can make this grim dark if you like to, but this is a great base to start with. I just wanted to paint it clean. I like painting clean, uh, but sometimes, you know, if I'm in the mood, I'll add this. Okay, now, the most incredible edible, uh, not edible, <laughs> the most incredible egg uh, is a silly putty egg. And this is another thing you can use for masking for uneven surfaces, for surfaces where uh, your painting tape does not really reach in and does not do justice for. And simply put, silly putty uh, is reusable. So if you want to conform to irregular edges, if you want to mask things off to make it a different color there, um, Silly Putty is the way to go. If you do not have Silly Putty, I mean, add this to your painting repertoire, your toolbox, because it is absolutely phenomenal that you can be able to use uh, Silly Putty. And I've had the same Silly Putty for four years and several hundreds of models that I have painted for my Space Wolves, now to my Tau, uh, for just about anything, my Flesh Eater Court Army, my uh, my Stormcast Eternal Army, and my Legions of Nagash Army, and I still have that same silly putty. Okay, so now I am shooting Steiner Res White Primer without diluting it. What I'm doing here is I'm upping the pressure of my uh, airbrush in order to do that. Uh, because the more pressure you put onto there, the more the thicker the paint can be and it'll shoot out. I am spraying non-diluted white primer and it is self-leveling so I do not have to worry about it and it comes out beautifully. All right, if you have larger areas, you may want to do a rattle can, let that dry, let it gas out, and then go over it with this Dino Res primer. It, it's much better than going over it with uh, just total black, but for small pieces like this, just going over total black, you can see it has the same kind of results, uh, but I'm using a little bit more paint in order to achieve that result. So if you want to conserve paint and do like very large things, like you want to do the, the round edges of the donut of your towel terrain, then you going to want to uh, spray it with like a rattle can outside, let it gas out, and then go over it with this so you can have the same kind of uh, color consistency and it looks like it matches. It's good stuff. All right, now uh, the time for the reveal. I love this. I absolutely love, love, love revealing. Um, things because then I see well how did I do and the good thing about going white over black like this is is that touch up over black like if you just paint black it'll just completely eliminate the white right so you could actually touch up any of your your non-errant uh, areas with that um really really easy like super super easy so that's really good stuff um all right there it is that's how I do white basically just up the pressure up the pressure you do have to clean out your airbrush but you know results the results all right so let's put this uh <laughs> let's put this huge gun rig together now this is one feature is specific to the tidewall gun rig um but like i said um all these techniques all these techniques can be used in any kind of um towel terrain that you want to build even even third party stuff you know even 3d printed stuff right you can use the same kind of techniques for uh and and you'll have the same exact results so it's super fun all right, so now that I did the black lining and stuff like that, again, I'm just going to do some added some details. I like to add to the details of it. I did not do the glow. I did not do the glowing weapon in the front. I wanted to keep it clean. I don't know. I could always go back. I could always literally go back and then add some of the glowing effects to the weapons. I haven't done it for the other parts of the army. So I was when I came to this, I'm like, it would be cool if I had a glowing weapon. But then I was like, uh, you know, two things, okay? One, well, it doesn't take too much time, but it does take a little bit of time. And I am speed painting this army like a boss, all right? I have to have everything done by the summer. I have six month deadline to get, uh, I think it's six to 8,000 points of Tau done. Uh, for those of you who do not play the game and came here just for uh, the hobby tips, that is a lot of miniatures. <laughs> Actually, I do have a couple of live shows that says the, how big is your project. You can check that out and you can see just how large my project is. And I'm gonna put up a link uh, right there, there, <laughs> over there. Uh, so you can check that out as well. All right, so yes, 
Absolutely. Now we're going to go for uh, Vallejo Metal Color Gold. And honestly, it is the only gold that I use. I am not using my Kalinsky Sable brushes for the gold metallic paint because metallic paint will ruin your brushes, right? So use something dedicated. I'm using a very cheapo brush that I got on Amazon. Uh, I don't even know the name of it. Uh, it's not one happy brush because I couldn't find them anymore. Uh, there might still be. I used to use this brand called One Happy Brush, but honestly, I just said, "Oh, look, this has a, a thick belly to it. I'm gonna go for it." And then I found that it look it works pretty well uh, right there. So just a cheapo brush <laughs> it's for this. Uh, my universal brush. Now my cheapo brushes, they actually do the heavy lifting. Like I try to do everything with the cheapo brushes before I get into the fine details of my Kalinsky Sables of my uh, Series 7. So uh, speaking of which, I'm doing edge highlighting. Uh, edge highlighting, what I do is I used a little bit of white ink um, from Donald, Ron Donald and Ronnie uh, Acrylic Artist FW Ink. I have a bottle right here. Um, and I use that in conjunction with a white or it was sometimes I use a lighter gray and just mix it up so you can have some pink consistency to it. I add some flow improver to it. Now you gotta be careful with the flow improver and the water mixture because if you're using it on a wet palette, then you're gonna have to just, you know, adjust it. Uh, so this way it flows off, but it doesn't go and everything is on there. So uh, I test the side of a bottle or anything that has an edge before I even paint onto uh, my miniature itself. Okay, so time for decals. I wet this decal here. I got a third party uh, because they don't have really big decals when it comes to towel stuff. So I did third party over here. Um, that's Fallout Hobbies if you want to check that out. Actually, I ordered the wrong one uh, at first. I ordered an all white uh, um, decal slides transfer. So if you're interested in getting an all white decal transfer of the bigger uh, symbols and having more symbols, I actually have that uh, available. Just, you know, leave a comment down below, uh, PM me. Uh, later on, I'm going to do my socials. So this way you can PM me if you'd like to. Uh, and if you're interested in that, let me know. Okay, so I'm using a uh, Q-tip or a cotton swab there, and I am just holding the miniature in place and trying to get all the water out of it. Now, later on when I varnish, I varnish with um, AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish uh, or Matte Varnish. Uh, I love this stuff. All right, I put through the airbrush and I mat it down and it makes the stickers or the, the decal slide transfers look, you know, really, uh, just really toned down. You can use dull code from testers. There's a whole bunch of things. So use your favorite matte varnish to matte down the stickers, matte down uh, and to protect your entire miniature right here. All right. Do you realize that when you put matte varnish on metallic, metallic paints are going to lose their sheen. So you may want to redo the metallic parts or uh, varnish it before you put the metallic parts in there. But look, it comes out really nicely when you do it like that. All right, time for the end pictures. I put a lot more decals into this. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I couldn't be happier with the results of this. And I'm gonna show you my other terrain as well. I added a lot of decals from um, from other companies as well uh, as um, as well as you know just the the GW stuff. I even put graffiti on the bottom of it. I'm just playing around with stuff right now, and this is where where I live. I live in a a bubble of creativity, just throwing things on there. You know, darn the meta. I don't care. I'm playing into the anime whole thing here. I'm having a great great time. And uh, yeah, so the gun rig itself, I saw that that was flexible. It moved up in the arm and everything else. So I wanted to add that feature too. So I did not glue that into place. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't be happier in the way uh, this gun ring came out. Uh, and it was super fun project. Now here's the entire Tau um, part. I have the drone port um, and you know I have the uh, shield wall and I have the gun ring together. That's all the three pieces of terrain that come out for the Tau that was part of my get or done challenge. My get or done challenge, I'm hashtagging get are done uh, and it's just motivating me 
to be able to get my entire Tao project done in a timely fashion. So I'm really, really trying to produce content every every time with more and more things accomplished. Just checking that off the list. Now I do have quite a few things that I did not. I did not post tutorials for. Um, and the reason why that is, this is a new army who's painting white. I was getting used to painting white and finding out which techniques, tips, tricks uh, uh, that I'm going to actually incorporate for the entire army. So once I had that nailed down, I was going to share a video. So it took me a while to get these tutorials out. Another thing is, is that I'm a teacher. So having the time to create content is limited for me, but I'm going to try to have more content available for you. Back to the main screen. All right. Well, Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. If you'd like to connect with us on Facebook, we have the Miniatures Paintbrush Legion right here on Facebook. Uh, my Instagram is at the Miniatures Paintbrush. And if you'd like to support the channel even further, you can go on to Patreon at www.patreon.com, the Miniatures Paintbrush. But if you don't even do all those things and you don't want to connect to those things, I'm just really happy you joined us today for this tutorial. More to come on the towel. And thank you for joining us. But if you like this video, sharing is the kindest thing you can do because then you get the word out about the miniatures paintbrush and more people come. Like I said, if you like this video, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And we'll catch you next time on the miniatures paintbrush.